welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. In this short video, we're going to talk all about layout alignment and dimensions in WordPress, specifically some of the new features that are now available in WordPress 6.1. All right, let's get started. All right, before we officially begin, I always like to do a review of the setup that I'm using. This will help you take what you learned today and apply it uh, in your own environment. So here I'm going to be using the latest version of WordPress, which in, at the time of this video is WordPress 6.1.1. I'm also going to be using the Gutenberg plugin. This is some of the latest functionality within WordPress. Pretty much everything you, everything you see today is available in 6.1. So you don't necessarily need Gutenberg. I just by habit like to include it. It allows us to kind of stay on the front line of all the things that are being developed within WordPress. Finally, we are going to be using the Frost team. So Frost is an experimental, I say that in quotes because it's a very stable functional theme, but it is termed experimental because it's something that we use at WP Engine to kind of explore all the latest and greatest functionality within WordPress. But Frost is freely available on GitHub. There'll be a link in the, in the notes below, um, but we're gonna be using this theme. Now you can also use something very similar to Frost, which would be the brand new 2023 theme. Both of these are block themes, meaning they incorporate the site editor. Basically, are built entirely out of blocks. Really, that's all we're going to be covering in this video, only block themes. Now, some classic themes will enable some of the functionality that you see today, but I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I can't say for certain if your classic theme will have everything that we talk about today. But if you're using a block theme like 2023 or Frost, it will. So that's a great starting point to take a look at all the new features uh, and then see how that might apply to your theme. So let's just hop right in and we're gonna start by talking about uh, layout. Layout is probably the most complicated uh, part of our discussion. So I figure we'll start with that and then get simpler as we move on. So layout inside of a block theme is a bit of kind of an abstract notion. So if we take a look at this little example here, it's a, it's a well, let's actually look at this. Let's look at the list view and see what it is. So it's a group block. Inside of the group block, we have some columns. We have three different columns. Now this group, you can kind of see, let me just close this, that it's full width. It's that black background. It goes the entire width of the screen. If we were to go look at the preview of this page, we can see that this black group goes the full width. So when I talk about a line, uh, layout, we can see, even though it says a line, well, I'll, I'll explain why it says a line, but I'm talking about layout in a second. But you can see here that we have this full width option. We also have the wide option and then the none. Now, if you look closely at these settings, you can see it says 640, 1200. Now this functionality has been in WordPress a long time. This is not new to WordPress 6.1, but I wanna review it because as it, fully understanding this sets the framework for what we talk about next. Now these values, the 640 and the 1200, these are actually set in the themes theme.json file. So if we hop over there, we can see here, I have the frost folder and inside of that I have, I'm looking at the theme.json file. Now I've collapsed some of the different sections to make it a little bit easier for us to see. But right here, you can see that there's a section called layout. And this is kind of why I called it layout, even though in the tooltip in the editor says a lot. So here we can see that there are two sizes, one for content and one for wide. And you can see the 640 and the 1200 that are represented there. These are the values that you see over in the editor when it says max 640, max 1200. Now, if we were to change this to 1300, just as an example, and we save this, now when we refresh the page, we should see 1300, which we do here, 1300. So this layout setting inside of theme.json is what's dictating those various sizes, full width, well, full width is full width, but then we have wide and then content. Now, there are certain blocks inside of WordPress that let you override these layout settings, or they apply these layout settings to the blocks that are inside of them. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, uh, but this is where a really important concept to understand when you're working with blocks. So here we have our group block, and I've set it to full width. Now, if we open up the sidebar panel here, we can see that there's a layout panel. And this layout panel is a tricky one to understand. So this toggle has been flipped that says, inner blocks use content width. 
nested blocks use content width with options for full and wide width. When this is enabled, what this will do is it will apply the theme.json settings for content and wide to the blocks inside of it. So if we take a look at the blocks inside of it, and on the inside we have a column block, you can see that I've aligned this column wide and it has these settings for 640 and 1300. I didn't refresh the page, but it would be 1200 if on default frost. Now, if I was to disable this setting, content width is that those default values are no longer applied to the inner blocks. So if I go back to columns, I can see that these alignment settings no longer do anything. And the reason that they don't do anything is because the values for content wide and width are not being passed down to the inner blocks. But while this might be a little bit confusing, uh, it's also incredibly handy because what I can do now is if I turn this back on, I go back to my columns and I see that my columns are set to none. These values I can actually override at the block level. So very similar to how we had it in theme.json where you could set those settings, I could say that I want content to be 800 pixels wide within this group. Maybe I want wide to be 1000. So if I change this over to wide, oops, that's the group. I want group to be full width. If I go back to my columns and I change this over to wide, now you can see that it says 800 and 1000 as opposed to those global values. So this is really handy because you can have that theme.json setting for content and wide and have it site wide but then in certain areas of your site, apply specific content widths for blocks uh, that you wanna constrain or make larger. Now this layout property is only available on certain blocks, namely groups, post content, which is a block used for site editing, and then also the, I believe the column block uh, also has the ability for layout. Now, this can be very handy, uh, you know, having these layout settings, but right now we don't have layout settings on blocks that you may wish we did. One of those is the cover block. So for example, if you attended the last, or you saw the last video that I did here on WP Engine Builders, we looked at this call to action uh, pattern. And inside of that call to action pattern, we had a bunch of different groups. Oops. And this call to action pattern is built with a cover because you want that background image. Inside of that, I have a group and then another group. The reason I have two groups is because cover does not pass down those layout values. There's no layout settings for cover, at least not yet in WordPress. So what I need to do is I need to first add a group and the group will expand there's no layout settings with inside of the cover block. So the, the, the group, which is basically a div, will just expand to fill the entire cover. Now, of course, I can set some padding on the cover block, which we'll talk about in a minute with regards to dimensions, but this group will just expand to fill the cover block. But what I want to do is I want to have layout working inside of my cover. So the way I do that is I add a group block, I enable this layout setting, and then inside of that, I have another group block. Now, the reason I have another group block is because this group, you'll notice that there's no setting for wide or width, or sorry, wide or full on this group. And that's because that cover block isn't passing layout settings down. So that's why you don't see it on this group. So sometimes when you don't see layout settings, you can under why am I not seeing those? That's because there's a block, a container block around it that is not passing down those layout properties. So now I've added this group, which is passing layout properties down to everything inside of it. I have another group. This group is set to wide. So this group is now constrained to that 1300 to 1200 whenever I refresh the page. Um, so that, that group inside of it is constrained inside uh, of the other group, which is going full width as the, con as the cover is. Now with inside of that, now on these blocks like headings, I have my you know, normal settings for content. You know, I could set this to wide, I could set this to full. Now there's a unique thing about justification. I'll talk about justification in a second, but I just wanted to show you now that how layout kind of cascades 
down in container blocks, which can be a little bit tricky to understand, and sometimes it's a little bit mind-bending on how this all works. But the main idea is that on a page, a poster page, the layout settings that are set in theme.json are applied at the root level. So all blocks at the root level, so like cover, for example, have layout applied. Once you start having blocks that contain other blocks, you need to manually apply the layout settings for internal blocks, which is exactly why on this group, for example, we've applied it here. We've applied the inner blocks use content width. If we turn this off, they're just going to expand to the full width of the container. And uh, the, again, the settings on the internal blocks are not going to work because the out container block is not passing down those layout settings. Okay, so let's talk for a second about that justification setting that I alluded to earlier. This is brand new for WordPress 6.1. Previously, when you had this layout section and you applied, uh, you know, applied the, the layout uh, to inner blocks, it was always justified center. What that would do is it would just, for example, we have this block, these blocks, which are all aligned, or sorry, all set to max width 640, it would just align them in the middle of the, of the container block. Justification allows you to shift them to the left or right. So you can see here, left or right. The key here is that there's, the blocks are still only 640 pixels wide. It's not as if we were just aligning all the content to the right. We're still constraining the content within 640 pixels, but within the container, we're justifying them left and right. This is something that's been asked for quite a bit because in the past, this is a fairly common thing within a Flexbox container to you know, justify things left or right before you needed you know, custom CSS classes to do this. So this is a really welcome addition for a lot of theme developers uh, in 6.1. So just make note of this functionality. You may not ever need it, but it's there if you do, and it can be quite handy in these scenarios where you wanna offset content, but still constrain the width of that content. Because I could even take this a step further. I could define content to be 400 pixels, and you can see how I've constrained the content, but previously it would look like this, and you wouldn't have any way to move it to the left or right, unless you were to do something with custom CSS. Now you can easily, you know, float it to the left, float it to the right. You could even do something like this and then get more detailed and align the content inside something like this. We could even do that with the buttons. Use this alignment setting to justify to the right. You could do something like that. Again, this was not possible before. All right, I'm gonna leave it there with layout. We'll kind of talk about some other layout topics as we move through further into the discussion of other features with regards to especially dimensions. Um, but that's kind of a quick overview of this layout panel that exists on group blocks, post content blocks, column blocks. It is very powerful. Uh, generally, you won't need to mess with these features. It will just inherit from your theme. That's generally what you're gonna want but there are cases where you can modify the content in wide widths, which then propagate to the blocks inside of that container. It can be very powerful functionality. All right, next, which we kind of already talked about, we're gonna talk about alignment really quickly. Alignment is something where it, it manifests in different ways. You could kind of call this justification, which we just talked about, alignment. Uh, when we click on this button here, we also have justification, which is in many ways, you know, if you wanted to align the buttons to the right or center or to the left, that might be the common vernacular, but you're actually justifying them. Uh, then we also have this alignment setting, text alignment, uh, which will align text left and right. And we have the same thing for headings and other text-based blocks. Now, alignment is, can, if you're coming from a classic theme, uh, can, can get a little tricky. And one of the areas that I really want to touch on is with regards to images. So let's come up here into our text. And I see this a lot. Let's add an image. And we'll do the media library, pick one of our Mars photos. And let's pretend we have this thumbnail image. One common 
approach, especially like in the classic editor, was to align this image to the left or right and then have the text kind of wrap around it. If I do that here and I align left, it's going to throw the image outside of that content area. And the reason is because the way that uh, block themes traditionally work is that the, the alignment is based on margin. And we can see that here if we t inspect, the edit, you know, inspect the editor. We can see what's constraining the paragraph, for example, to be that 640 is that orange is margin on either side. There's not actually a container around it, around the paragraph, constraining it to that 640. So when I align this image to the left, which is floating it to the left, it is, there's no, it's just, there's nothing to contain it. There's no, you know, div to contain it within the content area. So I see a lot, there's questions like, why isn't this working? I want the text to wrap around the image. Now, the, the quickest way to solve this problem, which may not be perfect for every scenario, is what I would do personally if I was in this situation is I would take my image and um, my paragraph and I would simply group them. What a group does is it basically creates that container. It contains both the image and the text. So that when you're in a situation where you don't want that, you know, the image to, flo to float all the way to the right or float all the way to the left, put it inside a container, and then you get that text wrap that you're, you're familiar with. This is not something that's new to 6.1, but just something that comes up a lot when we're talking about alignment and block themes. If you're looking for this type of look and feel, you need to contain your content within a container. Generally, that will be a group. Now, in this case, we actually don't need this content width because all we want it to do, we don't want it to apply any contents, uh, any width layout settings. We just want it to contain our content. In this case, I would generally toggle this off because we don't actually need to constrain the content. So the last thing I want to talk about today is my favorite part. Um, and this has to do with dimensions. And when I talk about dimensions, I'm really talking about uh, padding, margin, and block spacing. So you can see that here, padding, block spacing, and margin. One of the biggest efforts in WordPress 6.1 is to expand these dimension controls to more blocks. In the past, you know, you had pad, padding and margin, I think on group blocks or a handful of blocks here or there, but there's a huge effort in WordPress 6.1 to get those settings to most blocks that need them. And this is where you can really start, you know, uh, flexing the design system that is the block editor to do some really powerful things without the need for maybe a third-party plugin or custom CSS classes. So let's quickly take a look at, uh, let's actually start up here looking at this very simple feature, feature layout. Now this feature layout is a group, some columns, and inside of that we have some more co column content. Now the group, we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, the um, turning on and off the layout settings. Let me just revert this back to uh, what I wanted here. We'll do a line wide. So once we move past the layout settings, you can see that there's spacing around the columns. And if we come down here, we can see that there's this padding section. And what I've done here is I've added padding to the, to the top, bottom, left, and right. And it's different. And what's new in 6.1 is these spacing steps. I'll talk a little bit more about the spacing steps in a second and how that relates to theme.json, but that's one of the newest features. The benefit of a spacing step is that you can still manually do custom CSS. You could still do 23 pixels or whatever you would want and choose the different dimensions. The benefit of a spacing step is it allows you as a theme developer to predefine a certain steps for padding, margin, and block spacing, which then makes it really easy to have consistent dimensions throughout your website. So instead of having to remember, oh, I always need 20 pixels or 30 pixels to make things look consistent, users just need to know, oh, I need the small, medium, large, right? And you can just say, I need large, large, small, small. It's a much easier system in terms of remembering, you know, the different, uh, vari the different uh, spacing variables that you use throughout your site. So I've taken my group, I've added some padding to the top and bottom. 
pretty straightforward. Inside of my columns, I don't need padding, but what I've done here is I've done block spacing. Now block spacing is what controls the distance between blocks. Now lots of different container blocks support block spacing, as well as things like buttons. So for example, the space between buttons. One of the cool things that happened in 6.1 is the ability to define both vertical and horizontal spacing when it comes to columns. In the future, we'll probably see this with buttons as well. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to provide some amount of kind of responsive control over the look and feel of columns. So we already have the ability to collapse columns on mobile, but now we can control both the vertical and horizontal spacing. So for example, if my horizontal spacing was really big, something like that, right? And I was to go look on mobile, let's undo this and we'll do very large block spacing. Update. If I was to preview this on mobile, we can see that the spacing is kind of large. Now there's a trick here, which I'll talk about in a second when it comes to fluid spacing. Now we'll talk about that when we talk about theme JSON. But this spacing might be a little bit larger than we want it to be. If I go back to desktop, I could then fix that by undoing this and doing I want vertical, so on mobile when the when the columns are stacked, maybe I don't want any spacing. And it would look something like this. Now we have no spacing between our columns. But on desktop, we do. So this gives you a little bit more control on how do things look and feel on different devices. So expect this uh, block spacing, both vertical and horizontal, to be expanded to more blocks that support this sort of thing. I fully expect buttons, for example, we have buttons have block spacing. I fully expect this to come to buttons pretty soon too, because Buttons often, especially when you have multiple, many of them, they often collapse into a single column on mobile. So having that ability to set vertical and horizontal would be very handy. So as we look through this design, you can start to see how much I am using these dimension settings. So for example, this column is using padding, and we now have these visualizers that make it a little bit easier to see how these dimensions are impacting blocks around them. And we also have the ability, and I'm not using it here, but we also have the ability on column to define the block spacing as well. This is a good opportunity to talk about block gap and hop back into theme.json. So let's do that really quick. Now in your theme.json file, when you're using a block theme like this, you're going to be specifying under the style section in spacing a block gap. This is the default distance between blocks. So if we come over here back to our editor, we can see that the heading, the paragraph, and the button, there's some space between them. And if I look at my column, I haven't set any block spacing. I haven't configured that yet. So by default, there's some spacing between blocks. This functionality is controlled with this block gap value. It's called block gap in theme.json, but on the, on the editor, it's called block spacing but it's the gap between blocks. What I can do now over here is if I wanna modify that block spacing, very similar to the way, so actually let me just show you here. If we go to columns and I was to zero, uh, oops, wrong one. If I was to remove block spacing, it would default to 30 pixels. So that's what you're seeing here, that distance between the columns. Now, if I wanted to change that though, again, for this column, I could come in here, I could add some block spacing, and maybe I want it to be really large. And now you can see that the distance between them is, is larger. Now we have something going on here. Let me just take a quick peek. Okay, now I was expecting there to be equal space between this paragraph and this button, but there isn't. And the reason for that is because I have some margin set. So this is a very important fact, block spacing the distance between blocks is set on the margin, the top margin of the block below. So this block here has a margin applied to the top, which is the large block spacing, which is defining the distance between the two. Let's come over here, go back to our buttons. Let's remove this margin. Now we have a lot of space because that is 
uh, corresponding to this large block spacing. But if I go back to my buttons and I configure margin, and I set margin to zero, you can see that that margin value overrides the block spacing. This is an incredibly important point because what this allows us to do, so let me just demonstrate this by duplicating this feature uh, group. There is space between both of these groups. That is the block gap that's being applied by the theme. You may not want that. You may want to have these two sections butt up against each other. Very common design practice. The way to solve this is to simply come in here, go to margin, and we can, we, you could do all margin, but here I'm just gonna do margin top. We'll set margin top to zero. It's gonna zero out that block gap that's automatically applied, and now you have no more space between the two. So block spacing and block gap uh, are incredibly powerful. Again, the block gap inside of theme.json is gonna set your default. And then now almost every block has margin, has uh, padding, and many of them, especially those that have inner blocks like buttons and columns and whatnot, they're gonna have that block spacing value, which allows you to override it within the context of the block itself. You can also get really fancy and under block styles, you can define specific block gap for specific button types. So you, see, you can see here in Frost for buttons, for example, we've defined, defined block gap specifically at 10 pixels. So instead of that 30, anytime you add a button, and we can see that here, whenever I add a button, let's add a new one, you can see that the distance is only 10 pixels instead of 30. So you can do some really complicated, not complicated, sophisticated things with setting different block gaps and spacing and padding uh, on different block types throughout the interface. Here you can see on code, the code block, for example, we've defined padding. But the great thing is now, in the interface, you can also configure padding as well. So I really think that these dimension controls being expanded across blocks is really changing how we work with WordPress because it gives you so much more flexibility to really configure the design. I mean, I can come in here, I can set padding to zero. You know, you could all this design capabilities uh, to really make the design that you're looking for inside of the editor. It really create, makes it like a design platform. The last example I want to take a peek at down here is this latest articles uh, banner, I guess you call it. There's some interesting caveats that I want to point out uh, that are represented here in this little layout. The first thing is when it comes to row blocks. Now, row blocks are a, a subtype of, of groups. They allow you to present content in a row. And there's some kind of unique features that I wanted to just quickly point out when it comes to alignment and, and, and layout and, and, and spacing and dimensions and whatnot. So there's a lot more controls for rows. So for example, let me turn this back to default. I think it's middle. So what I have here, let me just take a quick peek. Let's look at, um, I wanna, look at our row here. So what I have is I have a group. So this is the black background, the whole group of this layout. Inside of that, we have a row. And then I have a group. And the group contains uh, the, the heading and the text. And then we have another paragraph that's a link to view all. Let's just talk about this layout really quickly because it incorporates a lot of the elements we've discussed so far. Firstly, we have a group that is applying the content settings of the site to the blocks inside of it. Inside of that, I have a row block that is set to a line Y. So it's only going to go to 1300 pixels. I can close this out and I can see that it is constrained at 1300 pixels. Within that row, I have two things. I have a group and a paragraph. Now rows present content side by side. If these were not in a group, these two items were not in a group, we would have, here I can do it real quick. Let's just ungroup this. We would have everything in a row. We'd have the heading, we'd have the text, and we'd have the link. But we don't want that because we want the text to be below the heading. So the easiest way to do that is just group. And we can do that here. 
Now they're grouped. Now, I also don't want the distance between the title and the description to be so lit large. This, this uh, distance is being controlled by block app by default. To override that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the, the one below. Again, block app is applied to the margin top of blocks. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to margin. And I'm going to set that to, I'm actually going to go like this. Let's, uh, oops, let's do zero. Zero is fine. And now we have margin zero, okay? There's another way to do this. Let's turn off this margin zero. I could have also done this by going to the group and configuring block spacing. Again, that spacing between the heading and the text is controlled by uh, block app, which in turn can be overridden by either margin top or block app, block spacing in this case. So I could come here to the group that contains the heading and paragraph, and I could turn this, you know, I could make it large or small, or turn it off completely. So here I've removed the block spacing entirely. Two ways, either apply margin to zero to the, to the paragraph, or set block spacing to zero. Now this row, again, also has block spacing. You could, I could set this here to move the, the link further out. But we don't actually, that's not going to achieve what we wanted to. Instead, what I need to do is I need to look at some of the justification settings or the alignment settings in many ways. Here I can justify them center. This keeps them together, center. I can move them to the right, or we can use justify space between. What this will do is it will apply an even amount of space between all the items within the row, the first being on the far left, the last being on the far right. Because we only have two, it separates them like this. We have two because we have a group that contains things, and then on the other side we have paragraphs. Now the last thing is I want this view to be on the same vertical level uh, as this text. So there's another setting here for vertical alignment. I could do top, I could do middle, and I can do bottom. So just be aware of all these controls that are available to you on these different blocks. It's a lot to keep track of, but it's very powerful once you recognize, oh, this row has all these different controls for justification and alignment, for, for you know, for, for layout, everything. So now I have this very, you know, nice, it looks pretty simple, right? But we did do a lot of changes to get it to this point. Now let's take a look at the big caveat to all of this, and that is the query loop. Query loop is something that you'll use quite a bit, especially when displaying this type of repeatable content. Inside of my query loop, I have a group. The query loop is a loop, so it's displaying a you know, query of different content, in this case, posts. And what you do is you define what you want each item to look like, and then it iterates that over however many items you're querying. So in this case, we're querying three posts, and I have a group. And inside of my group, I have a featured image and I have another group. And I think I'm applying, if I'm applying some padding, pretty simple stuff. Right now, as of WordPress 6.1, there's no way to control items in relation to one another with inside of a query loop. So you might think at this point, I want to control the block spacing between the items inside the query loop. Unfortunately, that is not currently possible. I fully expect in the future it will be, but you know, it, as we saw before with, for example, columns, where I could come in here and quickly just change the block spacing between the columns, that unfort like I could go like this, that, un that functionality is unfortunately not available in the query loop block. Unfo in order to change the spacing between these things, you will need to use some custom CSS. But I'm hopeful that by the time we get to 6.1, that functionality will be there. It would be, pretty, in my mind, it would be pretty simple to add that functionality at the post template level, and then you could apply block app within there. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, because we've been playing around with these spacing steps so much today, you know, these toggles, I want to show you quickly how those are implemented inside of theme.json. And then one cool thing called fluid typo, uh, sorry, not, not typography, fluid spacing that you can do yourself to really make this, 
these spacing elements really dynamic in a, in a more uh, responsive and mobile environment. So if we come over here to our theme.json and we go up to the spacing section, you can see that I have, you, this is again, this is brand new in 6.1. You can define spacing sizes. And you can see here that I have five of them. Frost has five of them. And we defined them extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And you can, for, for example, here, we define the small size is 20 pixels. So whenever you apply, so whenever you're inside of here, and let's go up to our columns. These columns all of a sudden look very ugly. But when we go to our columns, you, whenever you set this spacing size of small, you're setting a 20 pixels space. Now, if I was to set, or sorry, that's an extra small. I bet. Extra small is 20 pixels. If we were to hop up to small now, I could define any value I wanted. And in this case, we've actually defined a clamp. This is what we're calling fluid spacing. Now, it's not like fluid typography, another, func another feature introduced in WordPress 6.1 that does all the fluid calculation for you. You need to input this yourself. Um, but it is possible to implement fluid spacing within WordPress, within theme.json. And I think when I was showing you before, when we're looking at this padding, uh, here, let me do this real quick. If we go to columns and we set extra large, let me just make this look a little better. It's bothering me. There we go. Okay, so if I have this block spacing that's set to really wide. Let's even go here on padding. Let's set padding to really, really large. Something like this. This is not the best design, but let's pretend that it is. This is the way I want it to look on desktop. On mobile though, these large spaces could be problematic. Um, and it could not be what I want. It might be too much space. What I've done though is in my spacing definition for each level, I've created a clamp. And this will adjust the size of that spacing depending on the screen size that I'm looking at. All right, so if you look closely at the spacing around the edge here, and this is a little bit hard to, to tell uh, as we move through this, but look, if you look at the spacing at the top here, when I click on tablet, we don't really see much of a change. Again, our columns do get collapsed. But then if we go to mobile, we can see that that space is actually quite small. It's quite a lot smaller. Go back to desktop and now it's larger. So this, you know, you need to cons consider how you want this to work on every theme that you're implementing or you're designing. But it's a really powerful way to provide a user with some simple steps that they can pick. So some simple, you know, spacing steps that they can choose from instead of hard coding a specific pixel value and then allow that spacing to adapt depending on the screen size. So while it's not you know, a traditional uh, responsive control, it gives you that functionality and a bit more of a holistic approach where the user is just setting a single spacing setting, the one that they want to look good, and then that adapts depending on the screen size that they're working with. So it's something that's actually brand new uh, that we've implemented in Frost, and it's functionality that I hopefully in the future we will have a bit more built out fluid uh, spacing setup within uh, theme.json. But right now, very possible to do that just using simple clamps. So we've talked a lot about a lot in this video. I'm gonna keep it there, um, but hopefully you found some of this useful. I highly encourage you to dive into either Frost or 2023, uh, the new default WordPress theme, and explore some of this functionality because Prior to 6.1, these dimensions really did not exist on many blocks. Similarly, block spacing didn't exist on many blocks. And so we're kind of in this new age where we now have all these tools and we need to look and kind of learn how to use them to best suit the designs uh, for our block themes. So a lot of functionality can get tricky at times, but once you kind of get used to it and start applying this in real world design applications, it, it really does start to make sense quickly. If you ever have any questions, uh, of course, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, add a comment to this video. Um, you know, there's a lot of help in the community to onboard with some of this stuff.
So thank you so much for watching this video here on WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego. Again, I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. And if you're interested in more videos on modern WordPress building techniques, make sure to like and subscribe WP Engine Builders here on YouTube. One final thing to note, there will be an article that's a companion piece to this video that will be linked down below as well. Thanks so much and have a great day.